Let's check out the bees. This is a jar of honey from our friend's house that had a beehive set up in their backyard. I mean, I got suited up to check out all the honeycomb stacks and use the smoker and it's just something that I've always wanted to do. So it's such a special treat. Um, thank you guys if you're watching this. So all of this gave me this inspiration for today's project. We will be making this stained glass honeycomb in today's video. Now I want to keep this still a very beginner project. Uh, we're going to be doing these straight cuts to make the hexagonal shapes and then we'll put a few of those together and then they can make a whole honeycomb piece. So you can see how we can grow from something very small into a very large project if you'd like. So this can be a great beginner project for you if you haven't done one before. So if you're new to all of this and you want to get started, I've got two things for you. There's a beginners tools and equipment video as well as a starter guide. I'll leave those links down below so you can check them out at any time. All right, so let's get started. But first things first, let's go find these yellows and orange and amber glass uh, for our honeycomb in that shade style. Then we'll start cutting. Also, I wanna make the black lines, so we're gonna be using black patina for this one. And luckily, I have just the tray for this. So let's choose a few scrap pieces and see what we can come up with. That looks like a good one. This looks pretty good. Mm, let's keep this one for something else. All right, that's not even amber, that's straight black. Um, not this purple. What the heck, that's good. Get a few of those. This one's a little bit reddish, but I think it could work. No, it's getting a little bit, a little too red. Another wavy one, this could work. This is good. Maybe too small, but let's see. This one's good. All right, I think we've got enough now. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now we wanna make this hexagon and I went online and found out how to do it, how to draw it up. You can also find it online and just print out the size that you want, but I figured it would be kind of fun to draw it up and see how this could be done. So first you draw a circle with this compass and I've set mine to just about one inch radius. And then without moving the setting, we'll take this point and pick a place right on the line on the circle and we'll make a mark for this first section and move that along and place the pointer on that line and then continue to make the second section. And we'll continue this as we go all the way around the circle. Great, so now we've divided this circle into six even pieces. And all we do now is connect these lines to make the hexagon. There you have it, we learned how to make a hexagon using a circle compass. Now let's cut it up and use this as our template. So this will be the size of the individual honeycomb that we're gonna be cutting. We'll trace this on some of the glass now. Okay, got my glass cutter, so let's try a few cuts and see how this goes. Okay, nice and straight. A little bit deformed right here. Let's keep going, but we'll think about this one. All right, we'll have to grind this a little bit, unfortunately. So you can see how it's not that straight right there on the tips. For this one, I'm gonna use a grosing or breaking pliers. It's so small that the running pliers just wouldn't work with this. You can take this and grip it and basically just pull it apart. I'm gonna keep this curved jaw down for this one. Also, that didn't break as straight as I'd like, so we will grind that too. So basically, we join these pieces together and then you can grow them and arrange all the colors and patterns that you'd like. So let's go with this yellow one. This glass has some texture on this one side, so it's better to cut on the reverse where it's flat and smooth. This glass is a little bit thicker, but I don't think that should be a problem. Let's try the breakers on this. All right, that was good. 
Nice. I like this one. So maybe something like that, something like that. Start joining them up. So lining it up like that saves me two cuts right away. Oh yeah, just making sure I'm cutting on the flat side. Yes. So a lot of nice straight cuts, a lot of good practice. We have this other orange. Wow, this glass is even thicker than this one. This one seems a bit too thick. I don't want it uneven, so let's not use this one. Ah, this one's okay. This will work. Go with the breakers and moving along nicely. Should we throw in that reddish color? A little bit too red, huh? How about this? This is really rough on this side. Let's try to cut one and see how it turns out. I got this little piece right here. Let me go wash this off. It looks really dirty. I wanna see how it looks when it's nice and clean. All right, much better. Let's cut it. This is gonna be a good one. What do you guys think, keep going? How about this one? A little bit of grinding on this one too. Whew. Okay, didn't break the piece and didn't get my face. That was lucky. Let's do some more of this. So let's see how we can arrange this and maybe play with it a bit with what we've got right now. Let's see how it looks. You can leave it as is, like that. You know, you can do some shapes like that. Grow it out. You can add more, you can keep going. I'm kind of liking this randomness of it. Maybe just this one more piece. What if I do that right there? Yo, it looks good, huh? I'm voting no on the orange. And I'm going with probably this piece or... It's just hard to see, that one's ugly. Dang it, trying not to grind, but look at that. Way off the line. Maybe it's not so bad. So, something like that, you guys like that? No, that was just a random mix of these pieces. Looks like we have 10 pieces all together. So if you wanna make it look something like this, then you'll need 10 pieces of these hexagon shapes. Of course, we can mix and match and move it around. I mean, it can go any which way you want. I kinda of like it the old way. I don't even know how it was anymore, but maybe let's try to go back to it. try my best to not grind so we will use a carborundum stone for this let's see if we can get away with that and not have to use a grinder today it's working quite well feel good about this one We don't have to bust out the glass grinder. And also some of you might not have one. So hopefully your cuts are pretty straight enough, but this stone is just to help smooth things out a bit. All right, let's call that done. And we just gotta rinse them and dry them off for the next step. 
Okay, we're now at the copper foiling step. I'm gonna be using black patina for the final finish. So we wanna use black backed copper foil tape for this one. And we have our fid tool and a pair of scissors. So start off by taking the tape and wrapping it around the edge of the glass. Go around until you come back to the beginning, making sure that the tape is as straight as possible. And then push the tape down on both sides all around. You'll want to use the fid tool to help burnish the tape onto the glass. The neater you do this, the better your soldering lines will be. So just take your time and make sure the tape is really sticking to the glass all around. Got my soldering station set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to keep it about 700 to 750. My soldering iron with the quarter inch tip, my liquid flux, and a brush and my Solid Core Mastercraft 6040 solder. You wanna make sure that you've got the correct sides that you want to solder everything on. So I'm just making sure the texture side is on top. Okay, so I've got my pieces now the way that I want it to be. So let's tack these pieces to hold them all together. Always add some flux first. Just adding a little bit of solder onto the soldering iron. Tack these two together. And let's just keep doing that and continue down the line. So everything is now stuck together and all we have to do now is add solder to the entire piece. I flipped it over on the reverse side and started tacking just to make sure that each of those pieces are laying as flat as possible on the surface. Of course, add solder to the sides as well and keeping everything horizontal as you apply the solder. And my final step in the soldering is to go over everything once more just to make sure the bead lines are nice and smooth. And next, we just have to add two jump rings to this piece so we can hang them up. And using needle nose pliers has worked out for me, so I would suggest using something similar to hold those rings in place. Now let's use CJ's flux remover to clean this. Using a brush and some warm water, just add a few drops on each side and scrub all over to get all that flux residue off of the glass and the solder. And let's rinse this off and dry it up. And just to keep things super clean and to get ready for the black patina, I wanna use this quick clean and go over this once more. We got some black patina here and we'll split this out. Just brush it on and this should go black. So I'm spray cleaning this again just because the black patina didn't turn out as dark as I'd like it to be and we'll be doing a second coat of the black patina to see if we can get it a little bit darker the second time around. And I'm going over it just the same way but as you can see the patina now is working much better and everything is looking a lot darker and getting more black just like what I was expecting. To finish up, we'll use some wax to coat everything and you'll see the blackness of the patina start to shine really nicely from that wax coating. Give it a minute to dry and then we'll buff everything off for the final finish. And lastly, let's add a chain to this so we can hang it up. So I hope you had a good time with this one and let me know if you tried it out and if it was a success or not. And also we're headed to Japan for the holidays. So see you next time from Japan.